Okay, good morning, everyone. On behalf of Superintendent Hoffmeister and the Office of Federal Programs, I want to thank you for joining me this morning um, and welcome you to the webinar concerning the Education for Homeless Children and Youth Census Report for fiscal year 2019-20. Um, bear with me as I get used to all this technical stuff. But anyway, uh, the webinar is being recorded, as you heard Gary say, uh, and will be available on our website in just a few days um, for those that were not able to join or if you need to uh, refer back to it. Um, also, if you have questions, if you would go ahead and put them in the chat box. Um, at the end of my presentation, I will uh, answer any questions that are in the chat box. Today, we're going to talk about the Homeless Census Report, both for those of you that are not a subgrantee with the, the McKinney-Vento uh, Title IX subgrant, and those of you that are. For everybody, the due date for this Homeless Census Report is Tuesday, June 30th, um, which is coming up pretty fast, actually. Um, you will be able to complete this report once you are finished with the school year. So if the last day of your school year is officially uh, Friday, then the report will be open to you the next day. Because, um, you know, theoretically you could enroll children, uh, students up until that last day of school. So uh, you'll not be able to report this until after the last day of uh, your school year. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm just going to, I've got some screenshots of what the homeless census report looks like. I'm going to first let you know that you can find this on single sign-on. Um, go to your single sign-on, look in the applications for the application that's entitled Education for Homeless Children and Youth District Census Report. And it looks kind of like what is there on your screen. Um, you'll open this application and then we'll going to look first at the welcome screen for those of you that do not have the McKinney-Vento subgrant. This is the welcome screen. This screen here will pre-populate. It has the definition of homelessness uh, that we use, and then it has the name and contact information for the homeless liaison for your district. You will not be able to change any of the information on this page, so if the contact information is not correct, the only way to correct that is to go into your consolidated application and do an amendment and change the information there because that's where this is pulling from. So once you correct it, then it would show up corrected here on the screen if it's not correct. The other piece of information that is on here is whether or not your district receives the McKinney-Vento subgrant. Again, this will be pulling from your consolidated application uh, in GMS, and you will not be able to change it. If you are not a subgrant recipient and it shows that you are, please contact me before completing this report so we can get that corrected. Once you have looked at this and you see that it's all correct, you will then click on this up here in the corner, the census report non-grant. Section one is the number of homeless students served by grade level. Grades uh, pre-K through 12th grade will pre-populate. Uh, we'll pull that in from the wave from your student information system. You will manually enter numbers for uh, birth through two and age three through five, uh, not pre-kindergarten uh, or kindergarten. So those two fields will be manually entered. Everything else is gonna be pulled over from your student information system. So you're going to want to be sure that you have everybody 
all those kiddos that uh, you have identified as homeless, that they are marked correctly in your student information system. Uh, then section two is the primary nighttime residence of the homeless children and youth uh, to include, you know, whether it's shelter, doubled up, unsheltered, hotels, motels, okay. We've added a new category for those birth through ages five up through not in school, or um, five not in school. So the, those that are pre-K through 12, again, that information, their nighttime residence that you have entered in your student information system is going to automatically pull over. Uh, then those that you manually entered those numbers for birth through two and age three through five, not kindergarten or uh, preschool. You can just put those numbers, total those, and put them in this cat, uh, the field labeled birth through age five, not in school. You don't have to break those down into uh, which type of nighttime residence they have. Just have them on there so that the totals of section one and section two match. Those have to um, be the same before you go on. Um, and this is the, all the same screen. Um, section three, subgroups of homeless students enrolled. Again, this will pull over from your student information system, uh, whether they are uh, unaccompanied homeless youth, migrant children, uh, children with disabilities, or English learners. Those are going to come over uh, automatically. And then the new section is section four, primary nighttime residents of unaccompanied homeless youth. This is a new field that um, US Department of Ed is requiring that we capture this data. So this will pull over automatically for you. Um, and then section five, everybody has to enter something in this field. So if your district did not report any numbers in the sections above, you're saying that you have no homeless students, then in this field, you will need to describe what your process is for attempting to identify homeless students. So how, how is it that you're doing that? Do you have a resident um, enrollment form that, that they have to complete so that they are, you can look at that and see if there's somebody that might be potentially homeless. Do you uh, rely on your homeless liaison to ask questions and find out whatever your process is, you're going to type that in this field. If you did report numbers of uh, homeless children in the fields above, then what we're asking that you put here are um, just the description of some of the services that you provided to homeless children and youth uh, with your state, local, or federal funds, whether it's your federal home, uh, homeless set aside, state and local donations, whatever, but that you would enter here in this field uh, the services that you provided to these children. Um, if you, once you, you've got all this information entered there, you'll hit the save button. Now, if after you hit that save button, you look back and you say, oops, these numbers don't look quite right. Um, I see that, you know, it's reporting we have 50 homeless students identified, and I know that we had 68. So then you can hit unsave, go into your student information system, and find those students uh, that are not identified as of today, but need to be, correct that in your student information system, and then it will, uh, you wait overnight, the next day it should be, those correct numbers would be here on your census report, you would click save and continue on, okay? But again, this is all being pulled from your student information system, except for those two categories of the, the young children, the birth through two and three through preschool or kindergarten, not in school. Uh, so everything else is pulling from your student information system. So it's really important that you have uh, the, that correct, that you have them entered in your student information system correctly uh, so that it's pulling the information correctly. If you need help with that, um, you will need to contact your vendor um, because there are several different student information systems used throughout the state. 
and I'm not familiar with the ins and outs of all of them. I can't give you uh, any technical assistance on how to uh, identify those students in your uh, student information system, but your vendor would be able to help you with that. Um, but it's very important that you have those numbers correct. Uh, if you need any assistance other than how to do it in your system, let me know and, and I'll help you with that. Okay, but saying all these numbers are correct, you're going to hit save. Then you go back to the welcome screen up here where it says incomplete. It should say then complete. I don't have any that's done. And your superintendent will have to, there will be a button that says certify um, and your superintendent will have to click on that button certifying that everything that you've put in there is true and correct um, and to the best of your knowledge, right? We have updated the uh, help page. So if you are looking in your uh, homeless census um, application there, in your right hand corner, there's a help page uh, on that. It has these instructions and it also has a new and updated uh, glossary. Uh, just some information there for you uh, if you need that or would find that helpful. Okay, then for those districts that do have the uh, McKinney-Vento subgrant, the welcome page is, is the same. Okay, again, it has the homeless liaison's name and contact information. And this time it should say down here that you did receive the McKinney-Vento subgrant. If it says that you did not, again, you want to contact me so we can get that corrected before you uh, go any further with completing the census report. The section one and two for you is the same. Again, everything's going to be pulled over from your student information system for these number of homeless students served, except for age birth through two and age three through five, not in uh, pre-K or kindergarten. Um, same with the nighttime residents, it's pulling over the information that you have entered um, as to where these homeless students that you've identified are staying at night, whether that's in some kind of shelter or transitional housing, um, they're doubled up, they're unsheltered, or in hotels, motels. Those four categories pull over from your student information system, and then uh, you would total the age birth through two, ages three through five, and put that total in the field that's entitled birth through age five and not in school, okay? Again, the two totals of section one and section two have to be the same or it should not allow you to save the page. Um, section three and four are the same as we, we, I spoke about earlier. Your subgroups of homeless students enrolled, whether they are unaccompanied youth, migrant children, children with disabilities or English learners. Those are all gonna be pulled over from your student information system. Um, and then the new category or the new section, primary nighttime residents of unaccompanied homeless youth, that is going to automatically pull over as well. Then what's different for you than for the uh, districts that do not have the grant is that you will have section five. In section five, it has um, you know, several things that you could have used your Title IX monies on. Okay, and that's all that we want you to check. So if it, the services that you provided and you used Title IX money for, those, those funds that you get from the grant, those are the only areas that we want you to check here in Section 5. Okay, so uh, if you use other funds besides the Title IX, you're going to put those here in Section 6. Okay. So I, I've noticed in the past sometimes, you know, you just go in and check all the services that you provided throughout the year. But again, we've separated these out so that in section five, it's just the services that you provided using your Title IX funds. Section six would be any services that you provided using state and local funds, uh, donations, uh, your homeless set aside, that type of thing will be put here in 
section six. And then section seven is uh, barriers to the education of homeless children and youth. And I know that all of you want to say that you have no barriers. Um, everybody that is homeless um, is welcome at your school and, and there's nothing that's keeping them from enrolling. And that's probably true. But if you were to ask a parent or a student, an unaccompanied youth, what would they tell you are barriers? Uh, so think of some of the things that you've been told over the year or, or things that you've seen that maybe you don't feel like a barrier, but students and parents might see as a barrier. So that's what we're wanting you to put here in section seven. Um, you'll save the page. Uh, again, once you save it, if you see that the numbers are not quite what you think they should be, you go back and look through your records and say, oh, Johnny should have been identified and Tommy should have been identified as homeless and I didn't get them marked in the student information system. Unsave the homeless census report, go in and update the information in your student information system, wait until the next day because the wave updates overnight, wait till the next day, and then those corrected numbers should show up in um, here on this page. If the numbers are all correct, once they're all correct, you're going to click on the save button. And you'll go back to the welcome screen. And again, this will say complete and your superintendent will be the one who certifies that the report is uh, correct. And, and that's when it will come to me. You also have a help page that has um, these steps outlined for you as well as the new glossary. Okay, now if there's any questions, and I will find the chat box. Um, if section four pulled from our student information, it should be. If you have them, um, they, it should pull over, yes. And if if you have a mark correctly in your student information system, you'll see those numbers pulled over correctly. This, the, the screens that I shared are a, our districts um, that what their information is showing now and that all had numbers in it. So uh, it's being pulled from the student information system. I hope that answers your question, Kathy. Um, Rex, is the data being pulled for students flagged in the student information system as homeless at any point in the year? for one particular date. So if they are ever identified as homeless in your system, they should remain that way until the end of the school year. Because once they are identified as homeless, they are eligible uh, to receive all those benefits until the end of the school year, even if they become housed at some point. So um, at any time during the year. I hope that answers your question. Uh, when a student is suspended or otherwise temporarily leaves a school and then re-enrolls, um, i.e. temporarily enters drug treatment or an alternative school, infant campus removes temporary flags like homeless status. Um, it should not. Because even if they leave your school, you serve them at some point, even if it was for a day, you serve them um, as a homeless student. And so they should be included in that count. So if, if that's um, something that you're aware of, you might talk to your vendor. Otherwise, you would have to manually, I guess, at the end of the school year, go back in and mark them as homeless. I don't even know how that works, Rex, because I, I don't have any um, knowledge of how your student information system works necessarily. But I do know that once they are considered homeless, they are considered homeless for that whole entire school year, and they should be included in the count, whether they were there for a day, whether they were there for a week, two months, or whatever, they should be included in the count. Uh, if we use the money to provide a homeless coordinator to do these services, then check it in section five. For example, if the employee paid or out of the grant provides a coordination between schools and agencies, then check it. Um, 
are you talking about if you use the uh, Title IX money to pay for your homeless coordinator? I'm going to take it that that is what you're talking about. And um, So if you're using your Title IX money, then you would mark that in Section 5. If you're using your Title I homeless set-aside, you would uh, use it in Section, uh, mark it in Section 6. Uh, so, Kathy, do you also check the kinds of services the homeless coordinator provides if the coordinator's salary is in Title IX? So, no. So, unless those services are, are specifically paid with Title IX funds. So, if, if you're paying for the coordinator's salary using the Title IX funds, that's what you would mark um, in Section 5. Um, and then I'm trying to think of what services you might provide that, that wouldn't have funding in them. Um, like if you're referring them to another um, service or agency. Um, I'm just, I'm trying, give me an example maybe of, of what you're talking about that, that you would, uh, a type of service that you would provide as a homeless coordinator, but you wouldn't use Title IX funds for? I'm gonna type that in. Kendra Mitchell says, Rex, we have a Google Sheet with alerts set, so when any student leaves our campus or enrolls, she is alerted, and it has been wonderful. I don't think you can see the chat box, so I'm just passing that on for you. Um, I've been told, Kristen Arnold says, I've been told that our parents that claim homeless because of flooding can continue to claim homeless based on the fact that they still have not recovered from flood financially. With this said, could they claim homeless from kindergarten through 12th grade if they never recoup financially? Okay, so Kristen, it's not whether they recoup financially or not, it's whether they become permanently housed. So if they find housing, um, that is, you know, meets the definition, it's regular, it's adequate, um, you know, meets all those definitions, then they are no longer homeless. So if at the beginning of the school year you identified them as homeless because maybe they were doubled up because they didn't have a place to live, um, at Christmas time they find a house and they're now permanently uh, housed because it's regular, fixed, and adequate, then they would remain in that homeless status throughout that school year, but starting this, the following school year, they would no longer be considered homeless. So you cannot say that because of, of the flood that from now if they're in kindergarten until they're in 12th grade, they're considered homeless. Um, it's, it's not that long of a time that you're going to be able to say that. So it's a case-by-case, year-by-year type of determination that you would make. Um, there is a 300 word limit on the description of what we are doing to identify homeless students. Do you need more space than that? Uh, I, I'm not sure uh, the program, what the programmers did when they put that in, but if you need more space than 300, I can uh, definitely let them know and see if we can increase that, uh, but maybe not by the time you're wanting to get the uh, census report done. So you may have to compress um, your wording here. Um, tutoring and mentoring done by the coordinator. Oh, from Kathy. So in, in section five, 
if you are paid to tutor or paid to mentor, then you would mark that there in section five. Yes. Um, if you are, if, if you're using the funds just as your salary or as homeless liaison, then you would not mark that in there. Right. If I find out that's different, that's, that's how I've interpreted uh, it to be. But if I find out different, Kathy, I will let you know. Uh, from Kristen, do you want us to list services we made available even if they were not utilized? No, this is only services that you provided with those funds. Um, from Andrea, what kind of Google Sheet is that, please? I don't have that information, but if they want to put that in the chat box, I will certainly give that information out. And then Kathy says the coordinator tutors and mentors as part of her job. So is that as part of your job? So, you know, with time and effort is 10% of your time with tutoring, 10% with mentoring, mentoring and the rest homeless coordinator. Um, and so that's how the funding is. If not, it would just be all as homeless coordinator. Um, okay, Andrea asks again, what kind of Google Sheet in connection with Infinite Campus that alerts when a student leaves campus? Um, and I don't know that information, Andrea. Um, I'm looking to see it. Here. So, um, I will, um, Kendra says, we have a Google Suite bought by the school district and it's like an Excel sheet. So, Kendra, is it okay if I let people know uh, that they can contact you about this information specifically. Give out your contact information. You'll just put that in the chat box. Okay, so Kendra's email address, kmitchell at moreland.k12.ok.us. Reach out to her uh, for the information on the Google Sheets. Um, and she is very willingly here, it looks like, to um, answer your questions about that. Rex, I have a Google Sheet with all identified students on it, but I don't share it with school sites for privacy reasons. That's a good idea. Um, Kathy, I'm going to to check on that and I'll get back with you uh, on your question about the coordinator or the liaison and whether or not those services that she provides um, would be marked in there. So give me a, a day or two and, and I will email you the answer to that question. Okay, are there other questions? I hope that all of you are uh, staying safe and healthy during this crazy time um, and that you are remembering that the population of students that we work with um, in homelessness uh, are probably really hurting at this time. If you have any um, needs or, or questions about how to uh, reach out and serve them, certainly give me a, a, a call or an email. Um, and I will help you with that uh, because as crazy as this is for us, I assume that it's even crazier, or I know, I don't assume, I know it's even crazier for those um, homeless students who look to us for stability and safety in their lives, and this is kind of being yanked out from underneath of them. Um, so if you have any needs or if I can help you with anything, certainly reach out to me um, and um, 
if I can't help you, I'll find a person or persons that can. Um, it looks like, looks like um, there are no new questions. So I'm going to go ahead and, and end this. Uh, there's my contact information for those of you that might need that. Uh, please, please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions about the homeless census report or uh, about serving our homeless students. Um, everybody have a great day and I so appreciate you being on with me and, and making my first training uh, webinar from home a success. I hope everybody stays safe and healthy and I will talk to you all soon. Thank you so much.